Let's cover the 19 update. So we do have Michael Ngene, who's uh, on standby to tell us what the latest is. Good morning to you, Michael. Great to see you here this morning. We good morning, you, uh, Michael. On Monday. Yeah, good morning, Joe. And uh, I was going to say good morning, Alexi, but hey, we have lessons on breakfast. Making her debut. <laughs> Welcome to breakfast. I hope you're having right? fun, actually. Uh, uh, oh, yeah, lessons. I am. I am. It's actually quite interesting. Okay. So let's get it started, um, you know, bringing you updates as regards the COVID-19 pandemic and some of the steps being taken by several African countries in fighting this virus. Now, I might not probably call this good news per se, and I'm taking you to Tunisia, where the health ministry says it has detected two cases of the new Omicron variant BA2, but added that the detection of the two cases of infections by the Omicron variant BA2 does not constitute a danger for the health situation in Tunisia. A senior official of the ministry, Hekmi Luzer, explained that the Omicron variant BA2 seems to spread more quickly than the BA1 variant, which is dominant in Tunisia and other African countries across the globe, and also adding that Tunisia follows these sub-variants closely. Now, he stressed that, you know, this variant, in, and of course the situation in Tunisia is improving since the number of infections by the COVID-19 has experienced a decrease in recent days right there in Tunisia. Now, according to the latest figures released by the Tunisia Health Ministry, 2,095 new COVID-19 cases have been detected, raising the total number of infections in the North African country to over 967,000. Now, talking about the, this new BA2 uh, Omicron variant, let me just tell you that it is fast spreading, of course, uh, one of the variants that is fast spreading, and here is what we know about it. There is yet another twist in the pandemic with that discovery, which can spread faster still and may soon become what others are saying is the deadliest of all the variants. Well, the good news for now is that vaccines still appear to protect against it, but, you know, because it is so transmissible, scientists are racing to figure out what harm it could cause. According to the technical lead for COVID-19 at the World Health Organization, that is Maria Van Kerkhoff, she said, and I quote, BA2 is more transmissible than the BA1 already detected in over 69 countries, including the United States. But she says that we expect to see BA2 increasing in detection around the globe, and of quote. Now, this has about 20 mutations, that is this new variant, and that is set apart from its parent BA1, and some researchers have described it as a stealth variant. And of course, another mystery is where did this BA2 come from? But some scientists, Joe, say that it may have been around since the beginning of the Omicron variant last year. Hmm. Well, it's starting to um, navigate through a new name, mm. uh, a new variant, variant and so yeah. on and so forth. I, I think uh, we should just get um, uh, vaccinated, first of all. I think that's the first step, very first step. Yeah, you ask me. I, I, I love the fact that the World Health Organization has come out to say that the vaccines actually can still protect you, you know, from this new variant that is being described as being highly transmissible. Now, let me take you away from that story and let's go to Tanzania real quick, where the government says it is looking to set up its own vaccine manufacturing plant as part of its wider plan to tackle COVID-19 and other diseases in the country. Now, according to the president, Samia Suluhu Hassan, the country is also aiming to export vaccines Wait for it, to East and Southern African countries. If you recall, I brought you reports last week about South Africa, you know, commissioning that new COVID-19 vaccination plant that intends to, you know, produce over 1 billion COVID-19 doses by November of this year. Now, in terms of the cost implication of vaccines, President Suluhu Hassan said that Tanzania was likely to spend nearly $100 million by 2030 to import vaccines. Hence, the need for them to set up its own local capacity. That's a very good move. Now, the plan for a vaccine plant is a shift from the previous regime of her predecessor, John Magufuli. We all know about John Magufuli, who never believed that COVID-19 ever existed, but he died last year uh, from what people called heart complications. But some people say that he was actually, you know, he actually died because of uh, he got exposed to the COVID-19 uh, you know, virus. Now, let me give you, uh, give you the numbers real quick. According to Africa CDC, Africa has reported over 11 million cases with over 245,000 deaths, while the number of recoveries stand at over 10.3 million. Please, please, Africa, please, the world, everyone watching, let us do what we can to contain this virus and also hopefully get to eliminate it, Joe, and blessings. That's all I have for you.
I mean, this is, this is tilting towards the veracity of the fact that COVID-19 is actually here to stay and mm. everybody should get vaccinated. It comes in different shapes and forms, but it's still COVID-19. Yeah, mm. and, and the good news is African countries, they are doing a whole lot. Big shout out to Tanzania. Whoever believed that Tanzania will get to this point where it's talking about having its own locally made vaccine. Recall that, you know, looking at the fact that John Magufuli never, never believed. He, at some point, he talked about you know, going spiritual and, you know, using herbs and, you know, saying that you have to pray because the vaccine does not exist and all of that. But hey, kudos to the new president, uh, Samia Suluhu Hassan, taking that bold step. And we are hoping and we'll be keeping tabs on that story. Once that vaccine plan sets up and hits ground running, we'll definitely bring you all of that update right here on Breakfast Central. Thank you, Mike. Uh, thank you so much. Well, that's what you have uh, coming from the COVID-19 updates here on Breakfast Central, most importantly, it makes more sense if you look at it to own a plant uh, compared to when you are importing the vaccines. $100 million? Wow, by 2030. That's huge.